From the moment I understood the weakness of my flesh, it disgusted me. I craved the strength and certainty of steel. I aspired to the purity of the blessed machine. Your kind claimed to your flesh, as if it will not decay and fail you. One day the crude biomass that you call the temple will wither, and you will beg my kind to save you. Sup lads, I'm Nyx Lad, and today I'm going to be sharing an updated performance guide to mercilessly hunt down every frame you possibly can in the Star Citizen Live Persistent Universe as of patch 3.16.1. This is an update to my previous video from patch 3.13.1, and some things have changed since then. Before we begin, I have a Discord server, and I also stream occasionally, so check them out, like, subscribe, comment, etc, etc. I've added some things I felt were necessary, and tweaked the guide quite a bit. Some parts of the script still remain similar to the same as the last video, but this is a much more up-to-date version. I'm not going to argue about my methods, or show every single test I've done. All I'm doing is compiling information I've found and presenting it to you to form your own opinion. Though if you have constructive criticism, I'd be more than willing to continue updating the guide series. If you want to see someone tackle the nitty gritty of Star Citizen performance and see all the charts, tests, and raw data, I'd highly recommend going over to 10pound42's channel on, here on YouTube. You could view this guide in video form or in PDF form which will be released in the description and in the comments of the video on my YouTube channel. Star Citizen has always performed ridiculously badly, and though some may desperately try and argue that they get a constant 70 FPS in Orison, for the majority of the player base we struggle to break 30 in cities and stations and 50 in space. I'm not going to fully explain the science of why it runs so bad, but the long and short of it is that Star Citizen does not fully utilize your hardware in a bottleneck forms. We can't do anything about this bottleneck, especially considering that the servers of Star Citizen play a huge role in your FPS. Notice if you go into a server that is brand new and has less than 10 people on it, and how your FPS is higher than it normally is. Now go to a full server that's been running for 6 hours and see how much worse it performs. You can increase the chances of joining a newer or near empty server by queuing with a large party. Other evidence of the above point is that going into almost any other module in the PU, your frames are noticeably better, and the game almost seems playable. This gives us some insight as to how the server can affect FPS, and maybe how Star Citizen can be in the future when Gen 12 is more mature and in its development. Despite hardware only partially playing a role in the FPS you get, upgrades to certain PC components will improve, before eventually plateauing significantly. As I mentioned in the previous guide, these key components include your memory, or RAM, your storage drive, and most importantly, your CPU. Unless you have a graphics card that is a 1070 or older, I doubt upgrading will provide any significant performance gains, considering that the game only uses a small amount of your graphics card's performance. Let's start by discussing each of these three crucial components. The amount of your memory significantly impacts your performance on Star Citizen with 16GB of RAM being the amount required for stable play. Upgrading to 32GB may provide a boost in frames, but it's nowhere near as noticeable as going from 8 to 16. Having at least 16GB of RAM is very important for getting good frames, though don't be convinced to upgrade to 32 because 16 should be adequate. Your CPU is incredibly important to Star Citizen performance, but will peter out in terms of upgrades. As a quick example, since the last performance guide where I had an i7-6700K with 4 cores and 8 threads, I was getting 15 to 20 FPS in space stations. Since then, I've upgraded to a Ryzen 5900X with 12 cores and 24 threads, 
and my FPS increased to 27 to 50 frames per second in space stations, and sometimes 60s FPS at Lagrange Point stations. For this reason, I would recommend going with at least 4 cores on Star Citizen, preferably 8. But not unlike RAM, upgrading past 12 cores will eventually result in diminishing returns. Lastly, the device you store Star Citizen on is the most important component for your performance. I would actually argue that running Star Citizen from a mechanical hard drive is almost unplayable, with excruciating load times and terrible FPS drops from loading in entities from being rampant. If you're going to play Star Citizen, use an SSD, and preferably an NVMe M.2. For reference, I installed Windows 11 on my NVMe SSD and Star Citizen on the same drive. Cloud Imperium Games has been improving performance slightly with each patch, and have released their own guide on how to improve performance, though this guide is mediocre as it does not go into too much detail, but I will link it nonetheless. For information as to how your computer runs Star Citizen compares to, compared to others in the verse, go to robertspaceindustries.com slash telemetry. Exploring this page not only offers perspective as to how your computer runs Star Citizen, but also how low frame rates others with much higher specs than you are performing. Adding to the evidence of this render bottleneck. This proves that upgrading some of the less important components like your graphics card will only provide marginal improvements in performance. For reference, my current specifications include a 500GB NVMe SSD, a GTX 1080 Ti with 11GB of VRAM, a liquid-cooled Ryzen 5900X, 32GB of DDR4 memory, and a 1440p 144Hz G-Sync IPS display. Turn off all overlays including the game bar. Search game bar in the start menu and turn off anything relating to it. Turn off game DVR in Windows 10 gaming settings as well. If you have GeForce Experience, turn off the NVIDIA GeForce overlay and if you have Discord, turn that off as well. Go to the start menu and type graphics settings. Toggle hardware accelerated GPU scheduling on, add the Star Citizen and RSI launcher executables that you just configured and set them to high performance. Search control panel in the start menu, view by small icons and select power options, set to high performance. Something that many people including me have had luck with is setting a Windows page file. This can be done to offload some of the work of your memory into your cache on your SSD. To do this, Go to View Advanced System Settings in your Start Menu Search, go to the Advanced tab, select Settings under Performance, go to the Other Advanced tab, click Change under Virtual Memory, and then start by selecting your SSD, ideally the one you have Star Citizen on, and set a custom size of roughly one and a half times your RAM to roughly twice your RAM to be safe. You could play around with this, but whatever you do, do not select no page file and don't set anything to zero. This can blue screen your PC. I have 32 gigabytes of RAM and I set mine to 25,000 megabytes to 49,000 megabytes or 25 gigs to 49 gigs. This isn't exactly 1.5x to 2x my RAM, but I've played around with this and I found that this works the best for me. The above ratio is just to be safe and find a good starting point. Click Apply, OK, OK twice more, and restart your computer. Upgrading drivers is important, but I've never found it improve my frame rate in any of the games I play. I take the integrity of this step with a grain of salt, but everybody says to do it, so just do it so we're all on the same page. When I play Star Citizen, I close everything except for my chat software and Microsoft Edge with a tab of video I want to watch. I don't use Microsoft Edge unless it's while watching a video while playing Star Citizen. I have a primary browser closed usually, as well as any other unnecessary processes on my computer. I know this might be a cringy recommendation, but I would highly recommend switching to Opera GX. I'm not a sponsor of this or anything, obviously. I just use it because it has built-in RAM, CPU, and bandwidth limiting menu, so you can ensure that your browser isn't hogging any system resources away from Star Citizen. After installing Star Citizen on an SSD, navigate to the install directory and find Star Citizen executable in the Robert Space Industries Star Citizen Live Bin64 directory. Right click on Star Citizen.exe and click the compatibility tab. 
toggle disable full screen optimizations on under settings, apply and exit. Repeat this process with the RSI launcher with the executable in wherever you installed your RSI launcher. Star Citizen allows for custom config files for game related variables. In my last guide, I recommended a custom user CFG file, but, but some including me had issues with missing textures and planets that looked like moldy cheese. So I no longer recommend a custom US user CFG file. All you need to do is use the console, type R underscore, press tab, space, and type one, two, three, or four, and press enter to view server statistics and FPS with a number correlating with how much data is going to be shown on screen. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, right click on your desktop and select NVIDIA control panel. Go to the manage 3D settings options under display, select the program settings tab and click the add button. Add your star citizen.exe file and adjust the specified settings accordingly. Anisotropic filtering off, and anti-aliasing gamma correction off, low latency mode ultra, CUDA GPUs, set this to your primary graphics card, Power management mode, prefer maximum performance. Texture filtering and isotropic sample optimization on, thread optimization on, and vertical sync on. Save, apply, click the global tab, and set shader cache size to 10 gigabytes. After launching Star Citizen in-game, the graphics settings can be adjusted accordingly. Resolution, your native resolution. Window mode, full screen. Quality, high. Take note that the lower the graphics setting, the higher the CPU usage, and the higher the graphics setting, the higher the GPU usage. I set this to very high usually, but some note more luck with a high option. But generally, increasing this setting increases frame rate. Scattered object distance, medium or low. Terrain tessellation distance, any. Planetary volumetric clouds, off or low. Motion blur, off. Vertical sync, yes. Sharpening, 100. Chromatic aberration, zero. Film grain, no. Save and exit. An old technique to increase FPS is done by increasing the CPU priority of Star Citizen in the task manager. This can be done by going to the details tab and setting the CPU priority of Star Citizen to high. This can help performance, but this option res resets every time you restart the game. What I'd recommend instead is install an application called Process Lasso and never have to worry about it again. This is an alternative task manager that can save CPU priorities and run at Windows 10 startup. I'll link Process Lasso below, but once you start it up, right click Star Citizen EXE, select CPU priority, then always, and set it to high. Run Process Lasso in the background while you play and set it to run at boot. I would also recommend using an MSI timing control utility to put your GPU into MSI mode and using Intelligent List Standby Cleaner to clean up extra RAM and reduce input latency. These are a bit complicated, so I'll be covering these another time. But look up some configurations that work with your system and kind of toy with it. Last version of the performance guide, I decided to take the risk and overclock my CPU and RAM and GPU. This gained me about 3-7 to seven FPS, but for a few days my system blue screen despite my adequate cooling setup. Since then, I've disabled my overclocking systems entirely and run stock to, prefer, to preserve the life of my components. I will be posting the settings I used, but do your research and don't take risks. Play it safe. As a final tip before the afterwards section, if the server you are in has terrible performance, it has mostly been up for a while and will crash soon. Most of the players on that server are probably having the same exact performance issues as you on that server, so the best thing you could do is just switch servers. I'm no expert on this, but I just wanted to assemble everything I've learned throughout my year of playing this game into one dedicated hub for improving its performance in Star Citizen. If you have any questions or find any issue with this, please contact me and I can make the appropriate edits and answer questions. I'm also open to suggested improvements and I will be responding to comments below. I hope this helps. Have a great day, guys. This was Nick's Lad. See ya.